Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and this is Saturn that according to NASA apparently didn't always look like this which is almost actually no exactly the opposite of what I said in the video that I made about a year ago where I swore by it saying that this is like what Saturn always looked like and it never changed. Thanks NASA, now I have to erase this video. Actually no, how about I make a new video where I basically pretend that like the other video never happened. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Hello wonderful person, this is going to be a video that uh, is going to explain to you what NASA just discovered about these tremendously beautiful rings of Saturn. And it also suggests that other planets in our solar system also look completely different from how they look now. Which is actually absolutely awesome because that part I speculated about before. Anywho, so let's talk about this and let's see what actually is happening with these rings. Or, in other words, why NASA is now absolutely convinced that we're living in a sort of the perfect time frame to see these beautiful formations. According to NASA, um, these rings have only been here for about 100 million years. So in other words, when dinosaurs were around, uh, most of them didn't see them with their tiny little binocular eyes or tiny dinosaur telescopes that they had. Okay, that kind of de-escalated pretty. Okay, that humor just killed it. Should I start the video over? Nope, I'm gonna continue. So, uh, on this note, uh, basically what NASA is saying that in the next 300 million years, these rings will disappear. Let's see what's actually happening there because that's totally fascinating and absolutely incredible. None of us actually knew what's happening with the rings until uh, this really, really recent study using the CAC telescope from Hawaii that studied the interaction between NASA's ring particles and the magnetosphere of Saturn. As you may know, Saturn has the second strongest magnetosphere in our solar system after the beautiful Jupiter. And uh, this magnetosphere is actually destroying the rings uh, piece by piece. Now, they actually refer to this particular phenomenon as ring rain. And it sounds super awesome. It's actually a pretty good name for a rock band if you're thinking of starting one. Um, but what it refers to is literally a ring of um, rings. It's coming from the rings. And so what's happening here is that the radiation from the sun and also the micrometeorites supercharge the various particles, specifically the water particles, and uh, they turn them into charged uh, pieces of uh, well, water. And these pieces, these tiny little particles, start interacting with the magnetosphere of Saturn and then slowly fall along the magnetic lines and then create this beautiful, slightly radioactive rain that falls onto the surface in two regions. Uh, there's one actually that's going to show in a few seconds right here in the north and one that's right here in the south. And uh, they actually form these beautiful uh, formations, these beautiful rings that are actually visible on Saturn. In other words, the interaction between the solar radiation, the micrometeorites, and of course the magnetosphere of the planet itself are forming these very unusual rain-like, um, I guess you can call them structures. Although of course this is not a true rain, it's more of, of a uh, constant deposit of water molecules and essentially other ices that are bombarding the planet in these two regions. And because it's not actually dropping onto the planet, but is deposited onto it, um, it probably would not be very easily visible even if you were right there. But the amount of stuff that's falling onto the planet means that all of these rings, for the most part, at least the actual ices, will completely disappear in about 300 million years. In other words, if you wanted to imagine what this planet will look like in about 300 million years, all you have to do is go to Jupiter or Neptune or Uranus. Because this is probably what it's going to look like in about 300 million years. And now, all three other planets, Jupiter, Neptune and Uranus, do also have rings. But they're very, very small and for the most part have a completely different composition. The video that I made a year ago explaining why the rings of these planets are different, and that was actually the previous assumption, is that they were formed by a different type of an object. We actually thought that um, Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune had some kind of a um, rocky-like object that passed by very close and then created these rings that I'm going to try to locate by looking against the sun here. And there they are. You can kind of see them right above my head. There is like a tiny ring formation. And these are actually not formed from ISIS. These are formed from rocky and um, metallic components. And so we actually originally thought that this is because it was formed from a different object. 
Now, because of this new research, this hypothesis is out of the window. We now are almost certain that they all had these large ring formations similar to Saturn. In other words, if we were to add all four planets to Universe Sandbox right here, and to give all four of them Saturn-like rings, it's quite possible that this is actually what all of them looked like um, several hundred million years ago. So uh, all four objects probably had very icy rings. Um, maybe some were bigger than others. Maybe even Saturn did have the biggest rings. But for the most part, um, they disappeared with time because of this interaction between solar radiation, uh, micrometeorites, and the magnetosphere of those planets. We know that Jupiter has the highest magnetosphere and also is exposed to way more radiation um, and possibly even more micrometeorites than uh, Saturn. So it's sort of logical to assume that maybe just maybe Jupiter's um, rings were bigger. But it, it also depends on the kind of object that uh, passed by to create those rings. We still think that this is how those rings were created by essentially a relatively large asteroid or even some kind of a dwarf planet passing close to the actual planet and essentially being shredded apart and turning into rings. Let's see if this works with Pluto and I think I may have missed. Yep, it's gonna go inside. There we go. That didn't work. But if we were to cheat a little bit and put it in a close orbit with Jupiter, it would actually start falling apart and create these beautiful rings that we're now are going to have orbiting around the planet. So the chances for um, all four of these objects to actually have these large rings that Saturn has right now is very high. We definitely have to do more studies and find out what sort of rings all four objects had, but it would be very difficult for us to actually estimate uh, the true size of, the, of these rings because uh, we don't have enough information about the uh, objects that were captured or the amount of material that uh, was actually lost to these various effects. And so here is what Jupiter may have looked like, and this is actually with a collision from another object, um, but uh, you can see that its rings are much larger than they are today. And honestly, this is actually probably one of the most exciting discoveries of 2018, um, on par with some of the bigger discoveries of, well, the decade actually. Uh, it's really interesting how we were able to identify how these rings are disappearing and how it's very likely that this is actually what happened with the other planets as well. Now, whether it happened with our planet Earth and other terrestrial planets, that's another story. But because we have no evidence of um, either one of those planets ever having rings, we can't really say for sure just yet. Anyway, let's find out what NASA discovers about this unusual phenomenon in the next few years, and maybe, just maybe, we'll be able to explain the solar system even better. On this note, thank you for watching, please subscribe if you still haven't, and share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences through simulations and video games. In the video tomorrow, we'll explore something else you may have not known, so do come back tomorrow to watch another video. And if you'd like to maybe provide me with some better food for me to eat, uh, consider supporting this channel on Patreon, because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.